Yo, what is up, YouTube? Back with part five, our Super Bowl prediction video. So this is a bit disclaimer before I start. To go watch videos part one, two, three, and four, they're all going to be linked at the top right I card. So just click that if you have not seen any of the previous videos. I highly recommend you go watch them because I give good explanations on every single matchup, wild card, divisional, conference championship, Super Bowl, all the teams I have, and I really don't want to spoil anything for you. So please go watch that video right now. You won't regret it. Let's get into the video. Yo, what's up guys? Back with the final video in the playoff prediction series. And today, I'm here with Mike once again. What's going on? And we are, I'm going to be predicting the Super Bowl matchups. So, bit of disclaimer, I've already said this in the intro, but if you have not seen parts 1, 2, 3, or 4, go watch them right now. Uh, I linked it. I have a link, the top right, in the beginning of the video. Just, so cl just go click it right now. All right, good job. <clears throat> All right, so my Super Bowl matchup consists... Of the Steelers winning the oh AFC. Oh my god. And the Seahawks winning the NFC. I want to watch those previous videos, figure out how the Steelers got there. And if you <laughs> haven't watched those, I don't know why you're watching, alright? So I said go watch the other ones. Come on now. But if you are if you've seen them all, good job. So basically, we got a Super Bowl forty rematch. Ben Rossberger Steelers versus, you know, Russell Wilson Seahawks. Of course Russell Wilson wasn't in that game, but it's whatever. So, looking at this bracket, I'm going to go over every game very shortly to show you how I got to these matchups. So, I currently had the Chiefs at one seed, and they would play the winner of the Bills and the Ravens, and the Ravens are going to upset the Bills at Buffalo. I think they're the better team, and I think they're going to have a better record. Then we have the 3 versus 6 seed, the Tennessee Titans hosting the Houston Texans, and I think the Tennessee Titans are going to win this game. Home field advantage is critical, and they probably got the better team anyway. And then the 2 versus 7, the Pittsburgh Steelers versus their enemy, the New England Patriots. Like I said, wouldn't be surprised if the Patriots won this game because they cheat and they're Pittsburgh's counter, but it is at Heinz Field, so they should win. And then on the other side, we got the Bucks at number 1, and they're going to play the winner of 4 versus 5. And, of course, the Saints are going to beat the Cowboys, even though it's in Dallas. Cowboys suck. And then we got 3 versus 6. The Vikings at 10, 6, and the 49ers at 12 and 4. I think the 49ers are better. They're going to win that game. And then the Seahawks hosting the Packers, 2 versus 7. Should be an easy win for the Seahawks. And then we have the Chiefs versus the Ravens. I think the Ravens are going to go in the arrowhead and upset the number one seed Chiefs. I don't know why. I just feel like it's going to happen. And then the Steelers host the Titans at home. Easy win for the Steelers, no doubt about it. Titans suck. And then we got the Saints playing the Buccaneers. I think the Saints, number five seed, are going to upset the number one seed Buccaneers in Tampa Bay. Um, and then we got another division rival, the Seahawks versus 49ers. I think the Seahawks, they're hosting this game. I don't think it really matters. Home field advantage matters, but I still think the Seahawks are going to win. And then we have division rivals, Pittsburgh versus Baltimore, AFC Championship matchup. It's going to be a very close one, but it is in Pittsburgh. I think they should get the slight edge. And then the Seahawks host the Saints in the NFC Championship. And the Seahawks, with home field advantage, aren't losing this game. So that brings us to the final matchup. So you, you got any disagreements with all my picks? Obviously, you probably do, but... Whatever. Yeah, so obviously I vocalized them in the other videos. Um, I think the Steelers are a little high. I don't know. Um, I think that the Bills are going to be a lot better than you give them credit for. Obviously, we made, we made the video of whether or not they were overrated or underrated. We both disagreed. I think the Bills are going to be a solid team this year. But I definitely think you have some playoff contenders in this bracket. Um, and I do think that the Seahawks could be in the Super Bowl. Steelers, maybe not. We'll have to see if Ben Roethlisberger is still good, but you can talk about that as you want to. All right, so let's talk about 
the Super Bowl matchup, and who's going to win it? So let's start with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So we obviously know that the Steelers had a top five defense in the NFL last year, all due to the fact that they got Minka and TJ Watt, Bud Dupree, Joe Hayden. This defense was lights out. It basically won them every game they played in, and if they lost games, it was because of their offense. So when your defense basically carries you every game, how do you expect a team to be when you get your veteran, probably best QB in the AFC right now, back? So obviously we got Ben Rossberger, a veteran. He's older than the second oldest QB in the AFC North by a solid 13 years, like no joke. Baker's 25, Joe, uh, Joe Burrow and Lamar Jackson are both 23. So he's got that veteranship, which is why I think he has the skills to lead this offense to the Super Bowl. But the fact is that if the Steelers want to be really good and have this opportunity, they are going to have to explode on offense this season. And I do believe they are so undervalued right now. They're going to pop off on offense. And this is why. You already know Juju Smith-Schuster is going to have one of the best seasons of his career. Maybe better than his sophomore season where he had 1,400 uh, receiving yards. Uh, Deontay Johnson, I also think he's going to have a 1,000-yard season. Maybe make the Pro Bowl. We'll see. And with the addition of Chase Claypool and James Washington, you already know this offense is going to look nasty. But Vance McDonald, pretty good tight end. But when you pick up Eric Ebron, star tight ends, that did amazing when Andrew Luck was his QB, one of the best tight ends in the league that year. What do you expect to happen when Ben Ross? Whoa, don't disrespect Andrew Luck like that. Whoa, I'm not, I didn't disrespect Andrew Luck. What are you talking about? Trying to say Andrew Luck's a bad quarterback, Eric Ebron? No, I said when, he, when Andrew Luck was his quarterback, he had an amazing year. All right, and last good. season he didn't because Jacoby Brissett was garbage, good, obviously. Good. So when you have... Once again, another veteran QB throwing to Eric Ebron. What do you expect to have him come on now? And then the running back situations. I think Anthony McFarlane's going to have maybe a really good season if they start him. But James Conner, look at that back. His back's bigger than a <laughs> widescreen TV, honestly. Like, just look at it. This dude's going to have a monster year. You already know he's working out. His body's so hard. It's going to be a beast. Can't expect any less. So the talent there is there. Obviously, their offensive line's good for running. And this team, honestly, is looking Super Bowl ready and stacked to beat the Seahawks. But I'll let you talk about the Steelers real quick, actually. All right, so you're right. Their defense is stacked. Joe Hayden, Cam Hayward, TJ Watt, uh, obviously Minka, huge addition. I think that this defense is ready to be the AFC's best defense, debatably the best defense in the NFL. Uh I'd be shocked if this defense wasn't at least top five, top ten. Um, I do think that you are way overhyping this Steelers offense. Mm-mm. So, I don't really understand like Juju. Like Juju, I don't think he's. Gonna, I don't think he's great without Antonio Brown. I know that like obviously he didn't have a quarterback last year, and the Steelers chose to run the ball the whole entire season. But I do think that he might not be a one thousand two hundred receiving yard guy. I do like the addition of Chase Claypool. I think Deontay Johnson's horrible. I think James Washington could be good if he uh, builds up his speed a little more, his agility. But I do think that James Conner might be a little overrated. I think he's, like, top 30 running back. I don't think he's great. Like, I, I know he's – because, um, obviously, last year he had to carry the bulk of the load. So now that, like, they have a quarterback who, like, is actually capable of passing downfield, maybe – Maybe capable of passing down the field. We don't know how long that elbow is going to hold up for. But if if Ben Roethlisberger is a you know a decent quarterback this year, then James Conner is going to have a lot less of a workload than last year, which could benefit him. He'd be more well rested, and um, maybe run a little more efficiently. And that, that brings up the next argument: Ben Roethlisberger. He's kind of the big question mark of this team. If Ben Roethlisberger is his former MVP MVP self, Super Bowl winning self. I could see this actually happening where they make it this far in the playoffs. But if Ben Roethlisberger breaks his elbow and you got to call up Duck Hodges from Jacksonville or you got to bring in Mason Rudolph 
who already has Jackson. his head cracked open, then it could be Gigi. All right, so I disagree with basically everything you just said. Uh, it's the fact that Ben Rosberger is a veteran QB, but probably the best in the AFC, in my opinion. And Juju Smith-Schuster has the experience to have all those yards. Deontay Johnson, that's the key factor. He's gonna, he had the most separation from a defender last season. And he had Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph, absolute garbage QBs thrown to him. You already know, the best QB in the AFC, Juju and Deontay are going to have killer seasons. Eric Ebron's just another problem you for all the Pat defenses Mahomes? they match up. Pat Mahomes, what about him? You forgetting he's in the AFC? Uh, obviously not, but Pat Mahomes has, you know, <laughs> he's a beast, but yeah, Ben Rosberger's got more experience, all right? Pat Mahomes I, will say that, um, I will say that Eric Ebron, I think Eric Ebron's underrated. I think he's going to be really good with the Steelers, so. Yes. So I do believe this offense is going to be really great, and this defense is going to be great, which is why they have a great shot of winning the Super Bowl. But let's talk about the Seattle Seahawks. So the Seattle Seahawks are definitely one of the most underrated Super Bowl teams in the league. I honestly think they're top five in the NFL before the season starts, and a lot of people think they're like close to seven to ten in the top ten, so it makes, no real, makes really no sense to me. Uh, this team did get scammed uh, week 17 against the 49ers. Literally, all they had to do was run the ball one millimeter, and they would have clutched the NFC West and actually got third seed. But, uh, you know, 49ers, I don't know, they cheated or something. So this team is underrated. They should have won their division last year. But besides that, that just shows you how the 49ers are so overhyped. The Seahawks should get to this game. I think the Seahawks are better than the 49ers, and the 49ers won the Super Bowl, so they should win it. Also, they did not have a good game in, in Green Bay last year. Uh, they almost won, but Green Bay is a hard place to play, so whatever. But let's talk about their offense. So obviously, they got Russell Wilson. He's going to have a great season, obviously. He had a, almost an MVP last season last year, but you know, Lamar Jackson cut him short by a little bit. And he's going to have a great year. Because it's Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. You already know it's facts. You can't deny it. Lockett's going to have a great year. Probably 1,000 yards. DK Metcalf is going to have over 1,000 too. Wide receivers locked down. Obviously, they got one of the best rushing offenses in the NFL. Just like the Ravens. Which, obviously, they both had success last year. Uh, so, Russell Wilson, of course, can't run. But, Shad Penny, Chris Carson. You already know. This offense is going to be really good next season. It's very underrated at this point. It should be better. So what do you think about their offense? I, th- I remember I watched a lot of the Seahawks games last year because I had Carson and um, Lockett and Wilson on my fantasy teams uh, throughout all my leagues. Um, it's toxic. I'm not even joking. Obviously, Russell Wilson, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, the big play, like it's always waiting there, and you know that they can pull out whenever they want. But the thing is, if you look at the statistics, Seattle, the the percentage that they pass the ball on like any play, their passing percentage was 54%, and their run percentage was 46%. Whereas like the Atlanta Falcons passed the ball 67% of the times compared to the Seahawks 53%. The Ravens were only 10%. Uh, they only ran the ball 10% more times than the Seahawks. The Seahawks love to pound the run with Chris Carson. So I think that Pete Carroll needs to... Uh, Maybe adapt a little bit, realize that Wilson's in his prime, he's got deep threats down the field, and they have to really try and stretch the ball out over the top to be a great offense. Yes, so besides this great offense, Seattle's definitely going to have next season. Their defense is what probably has to be better. Their defense has to be top 10 in the NFL, or I cannot see them winning a Super Bowl, but I do believe it's going to happen. Um, And if Jadavian Clowney does end up leaving Seattle. This team isn't going to be in the Super Bowl, but I believe he's going to stay here. Um, obviously, this team's uh, defense did kind of give up a decent amount, like 20, 30 points a game, but their offense stuck with it. They had a lot of turnovers, interceptions. That's all that really matters. Winning games is turnovers. Winning games is stopping the rush, stopping the passing offense, and they're going to be able to do that against these hard matchups in the playoffs, including the Packers, the 49ers, and the Saints. No unfamiliar teams. 
and they're going to have home field advantage in every game they have, which is why I think this team has an easy route to the Super Bowl, which is why. Uh, obviously, I don't want to say the pick right here, but you want to add anything about this defense real quick? Yeah, um, I miss the Legion of Boom. I miss Cam Chancellor, um, Richard Sherman. I think that their yeah, defense still can contend, though. Um, they have Bobby Wagner, obviously one of the league's best linebackers. Shaquille Griffin filled in nicely last year, I think. Um, I just think that it's up to their cornerbacks to really carry this defense and make sure that they aren't going to lose games because of their lack of production. Yeah, so all this defense has to do is keep up, have a solid performance next season against their harder matchups. I do believe they're going to be in the Super Bowl. But there's only one winner of a Super Bowl. And this winner is the Pittsburgh Steelers. You already know. Bruh. Super Bowl 40 rematch. Insert Steelers comedy are going 2 whistles, and 0 boys. against the Seattle Seahawks. You already know. It's, it's common sense here, boys. So I did see this matchup last year at Heinz Field. Seahawks won this game by two points, but Mason Rudolph was starting an entire half, and we don't like to see that. So Ben Rossberger is definitely going to destroy this game. Their defense was a lot worse than it was or what it's going to be in the Super Bowl. This game is going to be an easy win for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I wanna, honestly wouldn't believe they won by 30 points. I oh honestly think God. it's possible. I just feel like it's going to be that kind of game where they blow out their opponents. It's Bro. common sense. We already know this one right here. So, what do you think about this matchup? All right, so obviously this is the Super Bowl matchup. So, I'm going to just get like, when I call one of their things bad, obviously it's not bad, but that's just how I'm thinking of it. So, in my eyes, it's good offense, Seahawks, against good defense, Pittsburgh. And then bad offense, Steelers, against maybe good bad offense. defense, Seahawks. So, it's about like, who is going to score more points? I think that the Steelers, they're obviously, I mean, I don't think their offense is going to be great this year. But if they do make it this far, then I could see them scoring bad offense after I don't know, maybe one over the top. Maybe like, I could see them scoring 24 points in this game. I could see it. And on the other hand, the Seahawks have one of the best offenses in the league. But how, like, once. If Pete Carroll shies away from the pass, then it's going to be GG. Obviously, Pittsburgh probably is going to have one of the best air defenses in the league, but that's kind of the strength of his offense. And if this becomes a game where Chris Carson has to just keep running against the Steelers' strong defensive front, it's going to be a sad day for Seattle. So I think that whoever scores more than 24 points is going to win this game. And I wouldn't be surprised if Seattle, if either one of these teams wins this matchup. 50-50, flip a coin. Bam, Dan flipped the coin. There's my choice. No, it's not Steelers, Dan. And uh, there you go. All right, so obviously let's talk about the specifics of this matchup, though. Head-to-head, head, the Pittsburgh Steelers defense is all they need to have to win this game. They don't even need to have a good offense, in my opinion. It's all, they have the best passing defense in the NFL. You cannot throw the ball against the Steelers. Mika Fitzpatrick's intercepting it. Joe Hayden's intercepting it. You already know. Terrell Edmonds is going to have a good game. <laughs> Steven Nelson's going to have a great year. You already know it. But besides that, we know that the Seattle Seahawks have a great rushing offense, which is why that's their, that's their downfall in this game. The Pittsburgh Steelers rushing defense, top five in the NFL. It's all they have to have. Well, it's common sense, you know. It's just a counter. They're going to counter the, the Seattle Seahawks offense in this game. Besides that... Ben Rosberger is going to have a juicy one. It's going to pop off. He's going to win this game against the Seahawks. Yo, yo what, week, what week was Roethlisberger injured? Do you know? Week two. Like during week two or like? Yeah, week two. During the Seahawks game. That's all I'm saying. Like I'm looking at the score, 28-26. That's like, that was without Minka Yeah, Mason too. Rudolph was literally in for two quarters or two and a half yeah. quarters. So if Roethlisberger so was in. You already know that's had, embarrassing. Come Minka. on now. Yeah. yeah, we didn't even have Minka Fitzpatrick at that point. He he was traded the week after this game. Interesting. So, we already know our defense is lights up. GG. So, I'd like to thank everybody who's watched all five videos of this series. Really appreciate it. And hope this matchup happens in the Super Bowl, because that'd be hype. 
Seven rings, no problem. So, thanks for watching. Mike's video is going to be out soon. His Super Bowl matchup is going to be an interesting one. So go watch that. So, anything else to add? Uh, no, that's all. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Insert dinosaur noise. Mm-mm. All right, yes. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Adios.